Welcome back. I'm now going to tell you about Sheryl Sandberg and the skills that she illustrates, which are conveying values with stories, building supportive networks, and resolving conflicts among domains. Sheryl Sandberg is very humble when she speaks in public uh, about herself. She's self-effacing and uh, is, is a real raconteur. She's become a, a great storyteller, although uh, she didn't start out that way. And her, her speeches, her public speeches, are not only about Facebook, uh, and what the company's doing, <clears throat> and her role and responsibilities as COO, Chief Operating Officer of Facebook, but about women's advancement and the women's movement in the modern era. Uh, she has become uh, a great spokesperson for that movement and is regarded as one of the great business executives of our time. She's known to be tough, fearless, but also open and warm. In 2013, when she published her uh, really groundbreaking book, Lean In, uh, she was the public face of, of Facebook. Uh, she was the head of operations and still is, uh, and she had learned that as the vice president of sales and operations at Google, uh, which is where she was hired from. She arrived at Facebook in 2008, and now that company, as of this recording, uh, is, is earning over $335 billion uh, U.S. in revenue and has 1.8 billion users worldwide. At the same time, the, uh, the changes that she's making at Facebook uh, including such things as the Women's Leadership Day, where women gather uh, and provide mutual support for each other and tell the stories of what is happening in their lives and how they can be helpful to each other. But also the lean-in circles. So part of the, the social movement that is lean-in, the core sort of uh, social technology for driving that movement, uh, are these circles, uh, which Lean In helps to organize, the Lean In organization uh, that she founded. And, and this involves um, helping to guide small groups of women and men now around the world to gather to provide support for each other in helping women to advance with very specific and concrete advice. There are now over 30,000 such circles worldwide in uh, over 150 countries. So this is large-scale change. Sheryl Sandberg has learned the importance of being able to talk about her struggles uh, with confidence, with gaining confidence. You wouldn't think that somebody in this role uh, who has achieved uh, such a such, uh, high level of, of impact and responsibility and success materially uh, would be someone who has struggled with confidence, but she has. And that's what motivated her interest in creating uh, the Lean In idea, the book, and, um, and the, 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 the social movement uh, that, is, that, that comes from the research and the stories in Lean In. She changed over the course of time. She learned like every one of the other people we're talking about here, and probably the great leaders in your life that you admire, she learned through trial and error, through continuing to reflect on what works, what doesn't, and getting closer and closer to her values, and to bringing in the different parts of her life, to weave them together in a way that provided support, sustenance, confidence for her growth in the public and professional world and to use her personal experience to educate others, to serve others. And so following the death, the tragic and untimely, from a, just a terrible accident, uh, the death of her, of her husband, the late Dave Goldberg, who was CEO of the tech company SurveyMonkey, 
this was Sandberg's second husband, um, they they were on a, a, a vacation trip and he uh, he was in the exercise room and fell off the exercise machine and cracked his skull and died. Terrible. Earth shattering for her and her family, two young kids. Um, she's come through that in, in a way that is once again serving as a model for so many people uh, and using her experience and bringing it to the world uh, in, in a project uh, in collaboration with one of my friends and colleagues here at Wharton, Adam Grant. Uh, they're doing a project together that's going to be a book um, called Option B. And it's about what happens when Option A doesn't work out. And it's, it's her story and their work together and his research uh, being gathered you know, from a lot of people studying resilience, which is really uh, central to what we are focusing on here in this course. How do you get through uh, life when your plans are shattered uh, and the, the lessons from that? So she's doing that uh, as she did uh, with Lean In. Here's what I learned about what it means to advance as a woman in society and in business. And she then brought that knowledge with research support for it to help in very practical and concrete ways other people who are struggling with the same issues. She was raised uh, in North Miami, Florida. Uh, and in the, in the 70s, her parents um, invested a lot of their time and energy in supporting uh, Soviet Jewry. Uh, and they they did such things as uh, um, making white chocolate in, uh, into bars that looked like soap for Soviet dissidents who, when they went home, they could sell the the uh, the soap as chocolate, which was highly valued, to raise money for their cause. Uh, so it was those kinds of things, and having people in their home who were working on these social issues that helped the young Cheryl, she was born in the late 60s, uh, to learn that you got to give back. you got to try to help other people who are in need, people who, who need your support. And um, when I, I met her mother at an event and I said, well, you, you must be so proud of her. And she said, you know, she put her arm in my, uh, her hand on my arm. She said, you know, people tell me that all the time. You must be so proud. But really what I told Cheryl when she was growing up uh, it's not so much about what you achieve. It's, I want you to be, I'm going to use a, Jew, a Jewish or Yiddish term, I want you to be a mensch. And that word, look that up if you don't know it, it means a person, a human being, someone who cares. Well, she has a lot of talent, Cheryl Sandberg, it's clear. And uh, graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Harvard in 1991, went on to work for Larry Summers when he was the head of the World Bank, went to get a Harvard MBA, uh, and then was chief of staff for Summers when he was at the Treasury. Um, her first marriage ended in divorce, and it was a public failure, as she called it, uh, which was painful at the time, but from which she grew. And uh, in the early 2000s, realized that she could have a bigger impact on the world through technology uh, than through politics. At least that's what she she thought then, and so in 2001, joined Google, uh, which was a young company at the time. And uh, you know, executives who work with her, people who work with her then, uh, will, will, will say that uh, she was always able, and this is something that seems to have been a signal uh, aspect of her career, to look a few steps ahead, to look into the future and to see and to build for that future, to hire people in advance of when they would be actually needed, knowing that they would be needed because of what was coming. Um, she, at the same time, experienced some inner turmoil, especially as her career grew and as she met Goldberg, married, they started to have children when she was pregnant with her first back in 2005, um, a reporter it was a reporter or someone who was interested in asking her about her career asked the seven-month pregnant Cheryl Sandberg, so what's going to happen when the child arrives and who's going to take care of what? And, and, uh, and, and Sandberg just broke down in tears. Like, what am I going to do?
She, she really didn't have a very good plan. She was fearful. She was afraid. Um, well, she, uh, she, she emerged on the, 50, the Fortune uh, 50 Most Powerful Women in Business list after she had children because she figured out uh, some important ideas and methods for how you, how you make it work. It's never perfect. Um, and one of the things that she does is, uh, is creates non-goal lists. So most people have lists of goals. She has lists of things that she's not going to do. So if you've got five great priorities, figure out which three you're going to do and put the others on a back burner. So she's become really good at prioritization, which, of course, emanates from her knowing what's important. In the context of her relationship with her late husband, she famously, and a lot of people wrote about this following uh, Dave Goldberg's death, how their relationship was such a great model because they here you had two C-suite tech executives in the very fast and furious world of high tech uh, who were both equal parents. And while it was never 50-50 exactly all the time, over time, as she told me, that's what they aimed for and that's what they achieved. They had an understanding that they were each going to be providing support for the other's life beyond their family and that one of them would always be there with, with their kids. Yes, there were moments when she felt guilty and he did as well. Um, but, for example, he moved his company from Portland uh, to Silicon Valley so that they could be closer together. There are many instances in their life together that show how their continual negotiation for figuring out how are we going to resolve the conflicts that always arise between work and the rest of life, how are they going to make it work? Another one of the uh, really interesting aspects of her career and her life was the formation of what's known as uh, the Women of Silicon Valley. Uh, sh she had uh, Andrea Mitchell, uh, was you know the journalist and writer uh, was I think at their company and was going to be taking a red eye and she said hey how about if you come to my home and talk to some of my my colleagues some more about your your most recent book and I'll invite some friends over and she realized hey I've got Andrea Mitchell here I should make this a, I should bring over as many people as I can so she invited a number of women friends last minute to come to hear Andrea Mitchell speak and they had a conversation and that i that 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 uh, gathering became the basis of an ongoing group the women of silicon valley which is had now emerged as a really important and powerful network connecting women uh throughout the valley where traditionally and still it is rare for a group of women to be together where they are in the majority, if not, you know, the sole, uh, you know, gender represented. It became a very powerful way for people to provide support for each other, to get support for new businesses and other initiatives, and there'd be kids running around. Uh, it is a very important place in which she grew connections uh, among and between other people. Her work at the World Bank, uh, back earlier in her career, uh, working on leprosy uh, and African uh, relief when she was at the Treasury gave her, uh, in, in addition to what she learned growing up in her family, a really clear sense of um, needing to devote her energy and resources to uh, world betterment and has grown in her philanthropic role uh, and that has become an important part of what she invests her and her company's time and attention in. But again, <clears throat> throughout her growing as, as an esteemed and highly respected business leader, there's this uh, underlying thread of increasing her confidence uh, because of uh, a lack of it to begin with um, and how difficult it is for women, so she tells the story of how, uh, at um, at a, a pitch at a private equity firm, she was the only woman present, and when uh, they went to the break, the host 
uh, didn't know where the women's room was, didn't know how to direct her, and and, and said, well, uh, nobody's ever asked. Maybe you're the only one who's ever needed to use the restroom. Uh, not funny, but gets laughs because it speaks to a real important truth about the difficulties of being a woman in a man's world. And it's through those stories that uh, she's able to um, connect with people, telling the real stories of what's happened to her that other people can relate to. So when she first wrote the first drafts of Lean In, she'd worked with researchers and laid out, here's what unconscious bias or implicit bias looks like. Here's what needs to be done to overcome it. This is what's necessary to help women to advance. In addition to important concrete advice like don't leave before you leave. In other words, don't check out psychologically and, and miss opportunities until you really have to go if you're going to take time off to, to raise your kids. Get a seat at the table. Take the steps needed to assert yourself and your needs and interests, and, and, and that's how you're going to get help, and that's how you're going to increase the chances of your success in all the different parts of your life. So this, it's filled with concrete advice and, and research that's important, but it missed in the first drafts the real stories like the one I just told you about the PE firm, the private equity firm. And her husband, uh, as she told me, when he read the first drafts, he said, this is kind of like eating your Wheaties. I mean, it's good for you, but it doesn't really taste that good. Uh, you got you to gotta tell your stories, he told her. And she reluctantly did. She talked about her divorce. She talked about uh, her lack of confidence. Uh, she talked about the difficulties of um, what it's like to, uh, to be present and assertive and to get support as a woman in the business world. And that made that book really sing. And I think it had a massive contribution to its success, a combination of research and the personal stories. Well, there's more that could be said about Sheryl Sandberg, but I'm, I'm going to leave it at that and ask you, are you thinking, well, it's certainly easy enough for somebody like Sheryl Sandberg, who has all the money in the world and incredible talent and all kinds of friends and people that want to help her to figure out how to lead the life she wants and, and integrate the different parts of her life. I, I mean, if you have billions of dollars, it's, it can't be that hard. You might be thinking that. Uh, and, of course, you're right. Uh, it is easy with a lot of money. Uh, but she didn't start with that. She grew the capacity to figure out what was important to her, to surround herself with people who would support her, to continue to adjust as she grew and in light of life circumstances, good and bad, uh, how she was going to be leading the life that she truly wanted. And so, like all of us, she learned uh, and sets us uh, a good example of someone who became the leader she wanted to be.